so the glove box is installed, all the hoses underneath the, for the air vents are installed, the padding under the dash is installed, this side I installed too, and now we are into wiring. My intention now is to connect these wires over here to the switches on the column, on the steering column. If I'm able to do that tonight, I'm gonna be really happy. And then all these wires need to be connected to the gauges and stuff like that, but we'll see. So, these are all the wires that come from the harness and these are the wires that have to be connected there. These are the wires from, the, from these switches here from the horn and everything so uh, and this is the overdrive wiring I showed you about this I have to extend some wires from there and connect them to this one uh, so uh, as you know I replaced the old harness with a new one but wherever I had something put in the connectors in the old harness I moved everything to this harness so now I can see that this uh, for example this green and brown was cut off here, let me pass it here. So here, you see here I have green and brown is this one, and that's actually what has been cut from here. And the same for here. I have a green with red, that's this green with red, and I have a green with white, which is this green with white. So three of the wires are solved already, and here, I have another harness, that's for the lights, I guess, and here I have blue one cut, so that was cut from the old harness, so I guess now I have to pull this out and connect this here, so that's the blue one, then I have blue with white, which comes here, I hope you guys see, and I have blue with red, which is this one that was here, and I have a brown one, which brown, I don't see, where is this brown? Hmm. That's weird, I don't have brown here. I don't know, we'll see. We'll have to trace this brown and see what is it doing. And then we're going to figure out where to hook it up here. But anyways, let me first... Uh, install ends here and hook up what, whatever I can hook up and then whatever remains we're gonna figure out what to do with it. I'm not gonna hold you, I'm gonna bring you back when I'm ready. When someone asked me how do I crimp the bullets, well I couldn't find a better option to crimp them. I use different crimping tools, I don't have the original crimping tool for bullets so I tried different versions and nothing worked well so I just decided to solder them and how do I solder them? I already have solder on the wire, so I just fill up the the bullet with solder too. Okay, so now the bullet is full of solder. I just make sure that it is nice, nicely melted inside. Maybe a little bit more. And it, when it's nice, when it's ni nicely melted, I just put it like that, and that's it. Wait for it to cool down, and my bullet is installed, and it is 100% sure that it is uh, making a good contact. Because I was afraid that with uh, crimping, I might not be able to do a good contact, or it might uh, lose the contact in a short period of time. So I just decided to go this way. Okay, now that I have all the bullets installed here, I can hook up the switches to the harness. I have my dielectrical grease here. And I'm just gonna dip all of them in advance in dielectrical grease. So now, for example, I have this green and blue. I 
can pull out the bullet, the cut wire with the bullet from there. I don't know why they just didn't pull them out. They had to cut them. Somebody didn't realize that these were actually connectors. And they can disconnect them. Actually, with the grease there, they go in easy. So next this blue, uh, green and red. Look, they come out even by hand. And green and red is this one. And like we said, there's only one brown here, and on the other side there's one purple with black. And I'm gonna go on the computer and check. Alright, I figured what the purple with black is over there. If you connect that to brown, haha, <laughs> so that's the horse, of course, but the brown, I'm not sure, this is the one coming from the horn button, because now here I don't have anything, like here on the steering wheel I have ground, you see I have green the light on the test light, so I have ground, and now when I shorten this, here, I should see green light there as well, but nothing happens. So, I will take the steering wheel out and I want to make sure, I want to see where this brown wire goes. So if I connect this to ground, now I should see ground here, but I don't. So this is not the same wire, but where is the proper wire for this? Oh, here it is. Okay. So this should be the one, let's see. Yes. So that's our horn. <laughs> Now if we ground this, we should have horn. Okay. But still we don't know what is the brown wire, right? And where does it go? Alright, so it's the day after and I started working again on the wiring and I solved some issues. I ran into some other issues that need to be solved, but because it's uh, during the day here and it's noisy around, I'm not gonna do that now. I'm gonna leave it for tonight after everybody leaves. And in the meantime, I'm gonna do some other things, like uh, I already started by removing the shrouds, <laughs> the stainless steel shroud that I installed before, because if you remember, I forgot to put one trim there. So I'm gonna take out the grill and uh, we're gonna install the trim. We got another trim from another car now. So we're gonna install it there and I'm gonna install the, the license plate lights and stuff like that and tonight we're gonna solve the issues here that I run into. I'm gonna tell you what happened. Next I decided to install all the instruments and the gauges and everything that goes on the wooden dash and uh, make it ready for installation on the car and also I wanted to make sure that I have all the switches and gauges and everything because I wasn't really sure what needed to be there on the dash so I took a couple of trips to the computer and I googled and researched what's uh, going on the 73 dash and I guess I figured it out because 
finally all the holes on the dash were filled up with something, <laughs> so I guess everything is right here. All right, all the instruments are installed, but uh, it looks like the speedometer and the um, tach need to be removed and installed after the whole dash goes on the metal dash. And uh, this uh, light here for the wiper washer, this is the old one. These, these other ones are new, but this one I forgot to order somehow, so we have to replace this, this one later. And that's it for now. So this is ready. Tonight we're gonna install it on the car. And now I can keep doing some other things. Like, for example, I can install the new brake switch. Because this one is broken. Also, if you remember when I did the wiring for the overdrive, uh, one of my, or two of my wires, the ones that go to the switch, I accidentally cut them too short. So now I extended them and hooked them up to the switch. Uh, then I tested the switch and everything worked well. Okay. Everybody left, so finally it is nice and quiet here and I can uh, do a proper video. So, like I said, uh, maybe you saw already uh, a glimpse of uh, what I was doing today. So, uh, what did I do? I installed the gauges on the dash, they're sitting over there. So at some point we're going to put them here. But before we do that, I wanted to check all the wiring here. Uh, since it, everything is high, uh, hanging so I found according to the schematic the light switch has uh, blue, brown and a red with black wires so I hooked, them, hooked, hooked this up and went to test the lights and, and when I put it on the first position here let's see what's happening around the car so we have all the tail lights working on the other side as well let me see yeah so this one is working as well and the license plate lights are working too so that's the back and at the front we have this one working we have the two marker lights on the front and this one on the side working too so that's good so far so good then we go to the second position of this switch and the only difference now is that we have the headlights running wow isn't that good so the headlights are on and now I'm gonna flip this up flip this to the middle, middle position we have uh, the big lights so low beam high beam and one more up and everything comes off I don't know why we have this third position like yeah that's like the uh, media, middle position of the light switch for some reason it is like that anyway so we have high beams low beams but when I do this I'm supposed to have flush right but nothing is happening over there so what I noticed let me put you on the stand again okay so now I remembered we had this brown wire here that I didn't find where to put and I checked the other three wires in the same loom they're brown with red brown, uh, blue with white and blue with red and when I look at the schematic here okay when we look at the schematic here these are the wires for the dimmer and flush to pass switch so this is the same switch that we use for the low beam high beam and for the flush 
And I notice here that for the flush option, we need to have a purple wire coming here because we have, we said there we have a blue with white, blue with red, and a brown with red. And these are the ones. Yeah, we have blue with white, blue with red, the brown with red, and we should have a purple one. But I'm guessing instead of purple one, we have a brown one. So that one over there that is hanging should be brown, uh, should be our purple line. And it should be connected to all the purple ones. We have one connected with a couple of purple ones there. So let's connect it to that and we'll see what's going to happen. So you see we have this connector, I don't know if you can see, with uh, three purple wires. And this one, well, I'm trying to imagine it's purple, but it's not, it's uh, brown. But anyways, if I connect it here, and I do this, now we have our flasher. So that was so. Even with the lights off, this should work, and it does. So headlights, soft. That's good. Next, I found the uh, uh, hazard light switch or four-way hazard. In the schematic, it's known as hazard indicator, and it is good because it has have this connector with six terminals. So I just hooked it up here. <clears throat> okay, and when I pull this out. And we have hazard lights. Let's see outside if we have them all four of them. And we have these at the back working. And the two end at the front are working. So that's good. One more problem solved. Okay, and this is where our problem starts because our signals don't work. So I turn the ignition on and there's absolutely nothing happening when I do left or right indicator and the ignition is on because the overdrive works right when the ignition is off the overdrive doesn't work so we have to troubleshoot that and since our four indicators are working already we confirmed that right uh, the first thing to check now is uh, our flusher unit because um, we have a separate flusher unit on, in the passenger footwell over there, different than the one that we have in the engine bay. Like somebody already mentioned that in the comments. The one in the engine bay, let me show it to you. So this flusher unit over here by the fuse box is only for the hazard lights. And this one is working properly as we already noticed, right? So there's another one. So there's this one as well here and we are in the passenger footwell this one is responsible for the separate left and right turn signals so this is the one that we have to check now so here on our schematics this is our turn signal flusher for the uh, separate turn signals so it is getting power from one of the terminals on the hazard switch so you remember our hazard switch over there with all the six uh, wires on it one of them is powering up our turn signal flusher and then from the turn signal this is the thing that makes clink 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 when it is doing clink it go it sends power to the uh, turn signal uh, switch and from there it goes to the left or to the right uh, turn signal lights so we're gonna check if we have power to those <coughs> okay I know you're too far away but I'm gonna heal a little bit so I'm gonna disconnect them both and we have no power to both of them, but at least on one of them we should have ground. So if I turn one of the signals on, I'm getting ground here, you see? So I have through one of the, now through the left turn signal lights, I'm getting ground. So this is the wire that goes to the lights actually. So now this goes to the left lights, that's in the neutral position and when I turn to the right again so this part of the circuit is perfect this is uh, the wire that goes to the switch and from the switch it goes to the left or to the right signal so this part of the circuit is perfect so we're looking to other one which is this one 
we should see power here right now, but we don't see power, so the flusher unit is not the problem, or at least not the only problem. I don't know yet if it's working, but before we get power to this side of the circuit, we don't know anything. So let's go see if we have power over there on the switch, on the same wire, which is uh, green with gray, or light green with and stands for brown. Yeah. All right, so here on the switch, I think this must be my wire. And I don't see anything here. Let me check the others. There's ground on this one, power on this one, power, ground here, but nothing on this one. And that's the same wire, at least the color looks the same. But just to confirm it, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna I'm gonna backfeed this wire because maybe the maybe this big connector here is not making a connection or anything. So just to make sure that this connector is fine and the whole wire from here to there is fine, I'm gonna backfeed. I'm gonna put power on that side of the wire. So this is a wire that I connected directly to the battery. And now I connect it to my wire here and let's see now what we have on the switch. This is our wire. And we have power on this wire. Actually, that's the same here. Okay, just to confirm it now, now I'm gonna... I wanna fold it with one hand, okay, like that, and I'm gonna pull the wire, okay. So you see the power disappeared. Okay, so so that confirms that the connector here is good and the wire from here to the flusher unit is good. So the only problem is that for some reason we don't see power here. So maybe the switch is bad, but it's working. Otherwise it's working. No power now. But let's test it. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna install the flusher unit there because we confirm that the problem is not there. And now, using the same wire from the battery, I'm going to put power to this. And let's see now. And our, our, our signals are working. I can hear the flusher unit now. Let's, let me move you. When I put power to this terminal here, And our left signal is working, and our right signal is working. So the only problem is that we don't have, we don't see power on this terminal. <coughs> so the only problem here is that I don't see power on this terminal for some reason. And I need power on this terminal. Huh. What will happen if I jump it from another terminal? This one has power all the time. It has power which has ground when the ignition is off and power when the ignition is on. So I'm going to try to jump this one to our terminal and we'll see what's going to happen. Probably our hazard lights are not going to work properly. Okay, so this is the one that we need to power up. And this is the one that has power, right? So now when we have the ignition on, we have power here. Okay, so let's see now. Okay. Now our signals are working, but what's going to happen with the... Hmm. So everything is working normally. So you know what guys? I'm gonna do something stupid. I'm gonna jump this permanently like that and eventually I'm gonna order a new switch.
Let me see what is the green. It is solid green, right? So the solid green here. So I just hooked up this uh, light green with uh, brown to the uh, solid green, and the solid green turns out this is our power from the fuse. So nothing wrong if I hook up this one to this one, right? I don't know why it has to go through the switch when I can just hook it up directly here. So that's what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna. I, I won't need to order a new switch. And actually, I'm not even gonna modify the harness of the car. I'm gonna modify the switch. And if I get a new switch, and it's gonna be just uh, uh, plug and play, you know. So I'm gonna cut this wire right here. I'm going to shorten it a little bit. I'm going to strip it. I'm going to strip this solid green. And I'm going to hook it up here. And let's hook it up again. Okay. So we have hazard lights, and when we turn the ignition on, we have signal lights. Perfect. So one more problem, problem solved. Okay, and I'm gonna cut this video here because I was uh, I really wanted to put all the wiring of the dash in one video But actually I have a lot more material for the rest of the wiring. So there's gonna be another video about that and uh, It's gonna be very soon. So thanks for watching guys. Thanks for commenting and subscribing and I'm gonna see you in the next one very soon